Really? An old-fashioned transformer? What happened to switch mode power supply units? Hi there and welcome to Jokut's workbench. So far in my previous videos I have shown you the mechanics and the outright absurd damages of my second hand CNC 3040 machine. And I realized I haven't shown you much of the control box yet. So let's do that now. I will crack this thing open and show you around. Enjoy! This is the controller box that came with my CNC machine. It has all the electronics needed to run the machine, including the power supply, the stepper motor controllers and the spindle control. The first thing that I noticed when I opened the box was a classical toroid transformer. That surprised me. I would assume that these days a switch mode power supply is cheaper than 2 pounds of steel and copper, but maybe I am wrong. The transformer has 200 watts. That is clearly on the low side, given that it has to power 3 stepper motor drivers and the spindle motor. The transformer delivers 18V and 40V AC to that board here. Um, hang on, I will give you a better view. This is the power board that contains the power circuit and the spindle control. Here's the input side. So this is a 36 volt for the spindle and this is 18 volt for the uh, stepper controller logic board. Although when I measured these AC voltages they're more like 24 volt and um, 54 volt. The uh, Stepper control the logic board gets its voltage from here and the spindle motor is connected to here. There's an external um, PWM input here that I'm not going to use and there's a connector for a display and an LED. I'm not going to use that one either, but there is a Hackaday.io project where somebody managed to get data out of this port. This connector here is for the spindle enable switch, which is also connected to, you can probably see this on the silk screen here. At the PWM input, there's these two pins here that are just wired in parallel with that switch. The input side is followed by two very large bridge rectifiers, which have uh, their own smoothing capacitors. Interesting enough, these two voltages that are created by the rectifiers are to, uh, in reference to different ground lanes. So there's different ground lanes for the spindle and for the logic board. Also interesting, the microcontroller on here that controls the spindle has again its own a ground lane that is disconnected to the other ones, which is created, I think, from this um, bug converter here and probably in combination with that 5 volt regulator that sits here. I don't see a large DC regulator or switch mode regulator on this board, so I guess the overly precise voltage is not that critical for the steppers or for the spindle. The spindle voltage is controlled by this FAT MOSFET here. That MOSFET output is connected to here, together with a freewheeling diode that sits under here and these large resistors that might act as some type of fuse. But on the other hand there's also two fuses here in these black boxes for the two different voltages. The spindle microcontroller that creates the PWM signal for the spindle gets its input from a potentiometer that is connected to here. At the beginning I thought that that potentiometer is just acting as a voltage divider so that it would be connected between plus and minus and that the middle pin gets either dragged to plus or to minus depending on how it is turned. But interesting enough these two pins are actually connected with each other and when the potentiometer is turned they are both pulled to plus. That is interesting to know uh, for my next video where it will try to optimize the spindle speed control. Mm -hmm. 
The microcontroller uses these optic couplings here to connect to the MOSFET. And I think these two optic couplings here would be for the external PWM input. And that's pretty much it. What is on this board? The Hackaday.io project shows how to change some settings of that controller. For example, make it listen to an external PWM signal or changing the ramp up speed of the spindle. I have a PWN in connector on my board here that I will try out in my next video. I am planning to add Arduinos to my control box anyway and that one here is idle most of the time and could do the job. And the existing PWM signal sounds just awful. A higher or lower PWM frequency might be better for my ears. Although I am still not sure whether I want to use my own PWM control. The microcontroller provides some extra functions such as limiting the ramp up speed of the spindle. When I use my own PWM then I have to take care of that myself. The stepper motor board has the name GP328C. The project on Hackaday.io shows a picture of an earlier version of that board. That one looks almost like mine, but it doesn't have the microcontroller. The microcontroller is a PAC18F4550. It runs a firmware that communicates with the USB CNC controller software from Planet CNC, but I am sure whoever made that machine did not have a license for the software or the firmware. Luckily, I can just use the parallel port to talk to my machine. That process is described in that project here and also in my first video in the series. There are multiple grounds on the controller board. The microcontroller ground is connected to the input ground and to the case, but that ground is different from the 24V ground and the 54V ground for the spindle. Here are the stepper motor drivers. They are Toshiba TB6560AHQ and they need plenty of additional circuitry to do their job, such as TTL buffers and these monostable multivibrators here. Communication between the components is done using optic couplings to keep the functional units electrically separated from each other. Mounted on a piece of sheet metal, there's the driver for the fourth axis. The board has some dip switches to adjust, for example, the microstepping settings. The other drivers don't have any dip switches, so I cannot change the stepper settings, at least not without modifying the board. But I think the settings are okay as they are, and I will leave the board as is. As described in my first video, I will add Arduinos to my control box, one that runs GRBL and one that has a bunch of other jobs. My Arduinos will have their ground connected to the input ground and they will be powered by their own power supply unit in form of an old small smartphone wall adapter. That brings me to my plans for the next video. I want to find out whether I can improve the RPM control of that spindle. That's going to be interesting. I hope you liked my little, um, unboxing tour of that control box. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and see you next time.